friends i'm happy to be back with another episode of timeless words of wisdom today we are going to talk about a very very important subject and that is friendship friendship is a very beautiful thing and we have in the bible a record of an exemplary friendship one of a kind and certainly something we can learn from and that is a friendship between david and jonathan let's go to first samuel chapter 18 verse 3 which shows us the depth of this friendship it says then jonathan made a covenant with david because he loved him as his own life to really understand the depth of this love you have to know something more about jonathan he was the king's son and actually speaking he would have been the heir to the king the next king but david had received a promise jonathan didn't didn't know that but jonathan loved david as much as his own life and jonathan saw something special in him so when his father was after david's life and he wanted to take david's life jonathan made sure that david was safe and that he could escape and if you read in first samuel samuel chapter 20 you'll notice that they actually made a cord Jonathan would go and find out how serious the situation was and if his father was really intent on killing David he would give him a sign so Jonathan went found out that Saul was really intent on killing him and came back and he was shot shooting arrows he had to shoot three arrows and each arrow he shot it beyond the other and then he sent his a uh, servant boy to go and collect the arrows and he said make speed haste stay not he was actually telling david don't stay leave go fast quickly save yourself and then he had to say goodbye to his friend that would be the final goodbye because both of these friends would never met again would never meet again in this lifetime he loved david as much as his own life but he loved him so much that he didn't want david to die he didn't want david to miss out on his destiny he knew david was king material so he went against his own father he went against what the world would say his future would should be and he did what was right for his friend not just that they both made a covenant they both promised each other that they would take care of each other's future generations too and they would keep that promise long after Saul and Jonathan were dead David sent for and asked his servants to find out if anyone was left alive in Saul uh, and Jonathan's family tree and he found out someone called Mephibosheth living in Lodebar Mephibosheth had fallen while he was a baby he had fallen down and he became disabled he was unable to work for himself and david because of his love for jonathan because he wanted to keep his promise to jonathan he ensured that mephibosheth spent the rest of his days at david's table the king's table he kept his promise 
Can you think of any friend you have who have done something very special for you that actually saved your life? Have you had any friend who made a sacrifice so that you could do well in your life? Maybe you never had to see that friend again, but what they did stayed with you. I'm thankful that God gave me a friend like that in the worst time of my life. God bless her. Okay, then the Bible also talks about somebody else who had a lot of friends. But after a point in time, he didn't have any friends left. You want to know who? Well, we are going to Luke chapter 15 and we are reading the story of the prodigal son. Yes, the prodigal son. He asked his father for his share of the property. And obviously he had a lot of support from his friends. who must have told him, yeah, yeah, you're doing the right thing. Go on, do it, do it. So he didn't think twice. He asked his father and his father just gave it to him. Hmm. I wonder what the father was thinking. Because when the prodigal asked him for the property, it meant that he was saying to his father, you're better off dead than alive to me. Because usually property is divided after the parent has passed away. Right? So that tells us how much he really cared for his father. But that also tells us how much he cared for his friends. He was willing to take their advice and do things for their desires as well as, as, well as his own, obviously. So we hear that he left the country, went and he spent all the money he had Yes, the prodigal son. He asked his father for his share of the property. And obviously he had a lot of support from his friends. Who must have told him, yeah, yeah, you're doing the right thing. Go on, do it, do it. So he didn't think twice. He asked his father and his father just gave it to him. Hmm. I wonder what the father was thinking. Because when the prodigal asked him for the property, it meant that he was saying to his father, you're better off dead than alive to me. Because usually property is divided after the parent has passed away. Right? So that tells us how much he really cared for his father. But that also tells us how much he cared for his friends. He was willing to take their advice and do things for their desires as well as, as, well as his own, obviously. So we hear that he left the country, went and he spent all the money he had and lost everything. Think about it. What is it that people would spend money on? Whether it's smoking, drinking, drugs, a promiscuous life. And the very next day, how much does that experience mean to them? It's just gone. Nothing. Imagine the value of a property or an inheritance and how it takes a lifetime to make it. Imagine blowing that up for something that's meaningless. 
His friends led him to do that. And when all that was over, he lost all his money. What happened? All these friends left him. Not even one was left. This young man had such a terrible plight. He didn't have any work. He didn't have any money. Even to eat food. And finally, this man who came from a very rich family had servants to serve him was left with no other option but to work in a big sty, big pen. Imagine a stinky place that you wouldn't even want to pass by. And he had to work there. He had to live there. And he had no food to eat, so he even considered eating the food that the pig ate. How do you like that? And that's when he realized that even the servants in his father's house were better off than he was. It's time we think about true friends. Who is a true friend? It's time we think about the advice that people give us. What's their motive for saying what they're saying? Do they really mean well for you? Are they telling you to take a big step for their own interests or for yours? What do you stand to gain and what do you stand to lose by listening to their advice? This is very, very important, friends. Please don't take it lightly. Because if you have a friend like Jonathan or David, you won't have anything to worry about because your friend will think about you. Just as they think for themselves, they think about you too. Wow! If you are really blessed with a friend like that, that's a lifetime blessing. Because they are friends for life. But if instead you are surrounded by people who keep on saying nice, sweet things to you, flattering you, making you feel like you're way higher and bigger than who you really are, because surely the friends told the prodigal that, hey, wow, you're so smart, you're this, you're that. But they were just pepping him up so that he will have this grandiose self-image and go and do whatever they want him to do. And when he went and did it, he fell flat on his face, lost everything and none of these friends were around. They set him up for disaster. They made him do what was the worst thing for him to do. So think twice. The friends who want to take you here and there and tell you to break your ties with your family. Obviously I'm asking, I'm thinking and talking about a good family, not a toxic family. And the friends who are only thinking about fun, fun and nothing less than that. Are they really thinking about you? And if you think that life is only about fun, well, there's another wake-up call waiting for you. Somewhere down the road, you realize that you have to stand on your feet, learn to take care of yourself, earn for yourself, and if you want to progress in life, be responsible. Start with being responsible for yourself 
and then for one more person who will be your spouse and then for some more persons who will be your children so it is a journey where you have to be responsible you don't just grow up in years and then don't learn anything with the years come duties responsibilities roles you have to play and they are all important and a good friend will make you realize your responsibility a good friend will make you realize where you need to be instead of pushing you backwards or pulling you backwards from where you need to be in life a good friend will inspire you encourage you and even correct you mm mm-hmm. so i hope you have some good friends in your life at least one and if you are surrounded with friends like the prodigal son had aha it's time you thought for yourself and did what is right for you we will be going more deeper into the subject of friendship in the next couple of episodes and for now this is henrietta signing off see you again in the next episode take care bye bye